Time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. Johnny, how soon can you get out to Highbridge, North Dakota? North Dakota, huh? In the winter, you guys send me to North Dakota and the summit of Miami, Florida. All right, what's your problem? We got two old duffers insured for a total of $80,000. What's the matter? Somebody threatening to kill them? No, they're threatening to kill themselves. <laughs> account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office National Fidelity Life Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of my expenditures during investigation of your policyholders, Mr. and Mrs. Arbuthnot Trump, or how the grave digger's face came near being Trump's. Expense account item one, $113.52 railroad fare, Hartford, Connecticut, to Highbridge, North Dakota. As they walked towards the station in Highbridge, the wind whipped white shawls of snow out of the night and around me like a Spanish dancer, and the raw cold had my teeth acting like castanets. Inside the shack, I found a pot-bellied stove surrounded by a pot-bellied station master. Hello. Oh, hello. You are our only customer? Well, I'm the only one got off the train. Can I, can I find a taxi around here? Yep. As soon as my son gets the mail and freight tucked away, he'll take you. Only won't be any taxi cab. You drive to wherever you're going in the pong. Uh, by the way, where are you going? To the Trump residence. You know it? Yep, I know it. Uh, you one of the family? No, just business. Oh. Well. Well, what? Uh, what is your business is none of mine. But, uh, have you ever been out there before? No, I haven't. Why, something wrong? Well, if it ain't, then everybody in this town has been getting a lot of unnecessary exercise. Uh, do you ever do conclusions? Well... Here comes the boy. He'll drive you over. Ah, uh, Hickey! Yeah? Hickey, you got a customer for the pung. Wants to go out to Trump Place. A uh, Trump Place? Hmm. Well, all right. But, mister, I'll only take you as far as the gate. This your first business, huh? That right, Mr. Dollar? Yep, that's right. Hey, how much more we got to go? Oh, about another mile. You cold? Cold. Ooh, I'm freezing. Well, pass your arms around. Keep up circulation. Hey, does it always get this cold around here? Nope. Only in the winter. Uh. Say, Hickey. Yeah? You mind answering a few more questions? No, no, many answers. You're welcome to those. Well, what about this Trump place? Why is everybody around here scared of it? What is it, a haunted house? Nope. As far as I know, everybody out there is alive, all right. Matter of fact, I'd feel better if some of the things out there was dead. What do you mean? Well, past year or so, I've been delivering some packages out there. Boxes coming in express on a train. Some of them come all the way from Africa. Quite a few from India, too. Walmart, danger. Walmart, do not open. Deadly. Whatever comes in those boxes... It's alive. What about the people, the Trumps themselves? Oh, they look nice enough. Not on the old side. Old man Trump looks like a deacon. His wife looks like a deacon's wife. But they never seem to come to town, let alone church. Hey, that's funny. What's so funny? Well, look, they're on the road. Race auto tracks. Only one place to go out this way. Same place we're going. To the Trump house. I don't see anything wrong with that. Those folks never have no visitors. Now, it looks like they're having a lot. <laughs> hey, maybe they're having guests for dinner. That's right. Maybe they are having guests in for dinner. I didn't say in for dinner. 
I said maybe they're having guests for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's some funny joke, that is. Yeah. Well, here we are, right around the next bend. Good. I'll tell you what, Hickey. When I get ready for you to drive me back, I'll uh, I'll give you a call on the telephone, huh? That'll be a good trick if you can do it. What do you mean? The tr- they don't have no telephone. <laughs> Expense account item two, a buck and a half pun fare. Hybrid station to the gate of the Trump estate where the driver Hickey dumped me off. I used one of the fresh tire tracks as a footpath up the long driveway through the snow. And steaming the white flakes out of my eyes with my breath, I took inventory of the house. It was big, colonial, and in good repair. All rooms lighted downstairs. One room lighted upstairs. Near the front... The automobile tracks took off around to the back of the house. I had to make my own footsteps in the drifts from there to the front door. Quickly, quickly, don't let that cold in. Let's shut the door. Now, who are you? What do you want? What are you doing here? I'm Johnny Dollar from the insurance company. As to what I... Well, I want to see Mr. and Mrs. Trump. As to what I'm doing here, I'm just the victim of a bad choice of careers early in life. Well, all right. Take a seat over there. I'll go check with Mr. and Mrs. Trump. But don't bother taking your coat off yet. So this is Northern Hospitality. Coming in out of the cold makes any house seem warm. But my overcoat started to steam about ten seconds after I got inside this one. So did I. And looking around, I saw the reason. There were potted orchids growing all over the hallway, and orchids grow only in tropical warmth. Despite the invitation not to, I took off my overcoat and waited. After ten more minutes, I felt like slipping out of my suit, a decision I didn't have time to make. They're just finishing dinner, Mr. Dollar. They suggest you join them for coffee. Follow me. Thanks. Mrs. Trump. Mr. Trump, this is Mr. Dollar. How do you do? How are you, Mrs. Trump? Won't you join me? There, sit right over there. Yes, Mr. Dollar, come and sit down. Have some coffee. Oh, thank you. Please sit down. Now that'll be all there when you may leave. Well. <laughs> Fine. Now, sugar and cream, Mr. Dollar? Uh, no, thank you, Mrs. Trump. This will be all right, just the way it is. Well, Mr. Dollar, I assume you brought the necessary papers. Yes, yes, I did. They're uh, they're in my pocket all ready for your signature. Good, good. We'll sign them right away. Well, I, I was hoping you wouldn't sign them, at least until I've had a chance to talk to you about it. Talk to them? What is there to talk about? I hope you understand that well, it isn't every day that an insurance company gets a letter from a pair of policyholders calmly stating that they are both planning to commit suicide. Oh, no? No. Well, well, I suppose it is a bit out of the usual run of things, but there's nothing we can do about it. Now, goodness, we checked with our lawyers. And he said we were perfectly within our rights. Well, granted, you've had the policy a long, long time, and the suicide clause is no longer in effect. However, well, frankly, the company did send me out here in the hope that while I was arranging the change of beneficiary you requested, I could also talk you into changing your mind. Mr. Dollar, you might just as well save your breath. Our minds are made up. Mrs. Trump is right, Mr. Dollar. As soon as we get those change of beneficiary papers signed, we intend to dispose of ourselves. Well, I... And furthermore, young man, within the past 48 hours, we have had ourselves thoroughly examined by a board of extremely well thought of alienists who signed documentary proof that we are both perfectly safe. Mm-hmm. So there is nothing you can do to stop us in that direction. But why? Why do you want to do this? Now, you you don't look unhappy. Well, they're not. We've had an extremely happy life, haven't we, Mr. Trump? Indeed, we have, Mrs. Trump. And that's just it. You see, Mr. Dollar, we both feel that having enjoyed such a beautiful life, we owe the world something. And finally, we have evolved a method of paying our debt. In doing what we intend to do, we shall leave to the world the beginning of 
of a new humanity. What's the matter with the old one? Nothing. But it is doomed to extinction. Mr. Dollar, just think of yourself. Atom bombs, hydrogen bombs, biological warfare. And don't forget the flying saucers, Mr. Trump. Don't forget, indeed. Unknown objects hurtling through space, interplanetary traffic. Dear, dear. A prelude to invasion and destruction. Now, now, wait a minute. How do you know? Who told you? Mr. Dollar, Mr. Trump knows these things. He was a professor for many years, and he reads, reads, reads all the time. He knows. He knows all that. <laughs> Would you mind pouring me some some of that coffee, Mrs. Trump? Not at all. There. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Trump, granted we're all doomed for extinction, how's knocking yourself off going to help? If you just stick it out, you'll not only enjoy a bit more time alive, but... You'll also be around to see the fireworks. You will notice, Mr. Dollar, that we are changing the beneficiary and our policies from our niece, Miss Hope Selden, to the young man who let you in here tonight, Mr. Irwin Hopper. Yes, I noticed that. And I also noticed that this young man isn't even related to you. Now, what's that all about? Well, Hope is a frivolous girl. She laughed at us when we tried to tell her what's happening. Irwin is a serious-minded young man who will use the money brought to this household by our passing to make the down payment on a new human race. Mrs. Trump, do you happen to have any brandy around? Uh, later, Mr. Dollar, later. You want to know why and how? Well, come along. We'll show you. <laughs> Nightmare is bad enough when you're asleep, but I was awake, and that's when they really frightened me. They took me down through the back of the house to a winding, half-lighted stairway into the belly of the black hole. The oppressive heat grew even more oppressive, more stairs, then tunnels, all the ceilings cement and lined with lead, all the walls covered with pens and cages, and all of them filled with snakes, Mr. Dollar, reptiles, hundreds of them, every species, every variety known to modern man. Look at them. Look at them and look at them well, for here is the new beginning. When life as we know it is blasted off the face of this earth, either by man himself or by his planetary cousin, when that happens, then these shall be the inheritors of this global sphere. As they were in the beginning, according to the Meston theory, as set down in 1903. Yes, Mr. Dollar, Mr. Trump knows these things, don't you see? No, I've got to admit, I don't quite see. You will. There. Look. Every pen, every cage is equipped with an automatic feeding device. Stored above the cages is enough scientifically developed food to keep these reptiles alive for a hundred years, if need be. Until the Holocaust, they will be cared for by young Harper. I could use an old Harper myself. When the Holocaust comes, Irwin Harper shall survive as long as possible. Then the machines will take over. The reptiles will be fed. And when the recording devices up on top say that the radioactivity and magnetic forces have been dissipated, the doors of the cages leading to the earth above shall be automatically projected outdoors and the cycle shall be complete. Then the reptiles will be set free on the face of the earth to once again evolve themselves into the new humanity. I see. Now look, Mr. Trump, I'm out here to ask you a very simple question. What's all this got to do with your committing suicide? That is easily answered, Mr. Dollar. We need money. We need a lot of money to buy the rest of the equipment. We are willing to give up the little that is left of our lives to provide it. Irwin will remain behind to put our money to good use. Mr. and Mrs. Trump, I don't question your motives, but you can't blame me for taking a second look at your methods. This man springing from reptile theory is flimsy enough, but that's your opinion and you're entitled to it. But what you're not entitled to, and I'm quoting the Bible and the law, is the act of taking your own lives. We've talked that over among us, and we are willing to take our chances. All right. But at least you'll agree this is a whole lot to take in one sitting, isn't it? Now, let me bring these papers back in the morning. We can talk it over once more, and 
Then you're free to go ahead and sign. Well, time is short, but I don't think a few hours will matter. Do you agree, Mrs. Trump? Yes, I agree. Good. Now, uh, if you'll be kind enough to either let me have a car or have somebody drive me into town. I... Car? We have no car. We haven't had one for months. And we've borrowed them from the property. Hasn't been one past the gate for almost a year. Oh? Including tonight? Yes, of course, including tonight. You just have to stay here. Come now. We'll take you up to your room, Mr. Dollar. What you need is a good night's sleep. I'd have had a better night's sleep on a tightrope. My room had the same sticky, hot air that filled the rest of the house. It may be great for snakes and orchids, but I'll take my steamings at a Turkish bath. I stretched out on the bed, turned off the lamp, and closed my eyes. But for 20 straight minutes, I could still see ghost automobiles and snakes and more snakes. I kept my eyes closed as much as I could because when they were open, I could see on the wall the serpentine shadows of the tree branches outside. At least, I hoped that's what they were. Then, just as I was hoping the hardest that the realest of them all wasn't what it looked like, out of the blackness from across the room, I heard... I reached down under the bed for a shoe. Not much of a weapon, but all I could think of at the moment. Then I snapped on the lamp and saw it. It had plenty of coils, all right, but it was strictly non-venomous. The steam radiator standing there, hissing my performance. But my nerve ends didn't even have a chance to lie down. They were still standing straight up when it happened. I was out of bed, across the room, and out into the hall in slightly more time than it takes to tell. The ray of light from my open door fell across a jumbled pile of beautiful young woman. I bent over her and... In just a moment, we will return to the second act of Johnny Dollar. But first... Now, with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Sounded like he said, where is she? I'm right here, Mr. Dollar, right here taking care of you. Oh. Ah, somebody's been taking care of me, all right. Oh. Well, where is she, huh? She's gone. What have you done with her? Come on, now, where's the... Mr. Dollar, you better get hold of yourself. There is no girl here. Oh, no? Well, look. Earlier tonight, you told me there was no automobile around here, but there was. I saw the tracks in the driveway with my own eyes. I walked in one of them. All right. Look out the window, Mrs. Trump. No, I don't see any tracks. Do you see any footprints? No, nothing. Just no. Okay. At least you know I walked up that driveway, right? And my footprints are covered up. So it's been snowing, the wind has been blowing, it's been drifting. Now I suppose you're going to tell me you didn't hear the girl scream. Come, come now, Mr. Dollar. You were having a nightmare. No girl scream. Well, if you didn't hear anything, what are you doing out here? What brought you? Young man, we have a right to be wherever in our own home we choose to be. But I might as well tell you, I 
found you when I started to the kitchen to get some crackers and warm milk. I found you lying here. Yeah, everyone's lying around here. Young man, that does it. Once we get those papers signed, I'm afraid we shall have to ask you to leave. That's all right with me. They're here in my room. Come on. The way some people stand in the way of the few others who are making a genuine effort to sustain some kind of life on the Yes, Mr. Comfort, that's here you, Clara. You'll find a pen there on the table. And the papers are right here on my... Hey. Yes, Mr. Dollar? The papers are gone. Well, how can they be gone if you brought them at all? We warn you, Mr. Dollar, we will not stand for any more of your dilly-dallying. We want those papers, and now. We are determined to sign them immediately. Suddenly, that has become my fondest hope. Now, do us all a favor. Go back to bed and give me a chance to do a little walking in your sleep. I'm looking for a girl, and I'll admit this is a very unlikely place to find her. I'll thank you to get out of my bedroom. You realize how suspicious you look just lying there in bed? What do you mean? Well, I mean that about 15 minutes ago, a woman screamed at the top of her lungs not 20 feet from here. Now, what's your story? That you didn't hear it? Or does it happen around here all the time? You're crazy. I didn't hear any woman scream, and I don't think you did. Okay, have it your way. I'm hearing things. But one thing I know, I'm not feeling things. See here? There's a lump on my head. That's for real. That doesn't interest me a bit. If I find out you put it there, it'll interest you. I'll not only put an egg on your skull, I'll make a whole omelet. In case you don't know it, you're looking at a citizen who's burned up. M-A-D. Mad. From there, I started through the rest of the rooms in the house. I thought I knew who I was looking for. The only person I could think of who would profit by seeing those papers not signed. The present beneficiary of the Trump policy, their niece, Miss Hope Selden. All I could find in the next six bedrooms was a lot of old-fashioned furniture. I was just looking under the bed in the last when the wind outside took on a new note. I ran back to my own room, flung open the window and stuck my head out into the blizzard trying to get a look in the direction of the noise. I wasn't taking any chances on that kicker finally sparking the automobile into light before I had a chance to see who was in it. I swung my feet over the sill and dropped the one story into a high drift. your time. Around here, people only go for play rides. What do you want? Who are you? You should know. You had your hand in my coat pocket earlier tonight. Of course, unfortunately, I wasn't in the coat, but something else was. And I want it back. If I took anything out of your pocket, I had plenty of reason and plenty of right to do it. The only one I want taking things out of my pocket is the cleaner when he's filling out the tobacco crumbs. Now, come on, give me those papers. Now, just let me talk to you first. I want you to hear my side of things. Look, I'm freezing. If it takes more than five seconds for you to say what you got to say, no dice. Well, then let's go back in the house. I know you'll believe me. I saw plenty about her to interest me, but nothing to relax me. She looked like a, well, a big-time operator. A gal who would be as dangerous kissing you as killing you. As I closed the door behind us, she walked across the room and made a perfectly natural movement as though to throw open her coat. When she turned, she had a gun in her hand. It was the first time I'd ever seen a shoulder holster on a woman. Now put your hands up, Mr. Dollar, and listen. Uh Uh-huh. If you'll just unwrap your finger from around that trigger, I'll be more likely to keep my mind on what you're saying. Go ahead. I'm listening. You've got to help me. Help you? Yes, help me prevent my aunt and uncle from making fools of themselves. We can't let them leave their money to Irwin Harper. Well, it's their money. They're attempting to do what they, well, what they believe is right. That money is mine, and I'll kill anyone to get it. Irwin Harper won't stick around five minutes after my aunt and uncle have killed themselves. He isn't planning on taking care of their filthy snakes. I was in his room tonight after he went to sleep. In his pocket, I found a ticket for South America. His plans were all made. He caught me in there and chased me out in the hall and slugged me. 
When I came to, you were lying there unconscious beside me. I ran downstairs, and I fixed their steam. I threw the switch to release their stinking reptiles. By now, the snakes are all outside, freezing to death. Don't move. You don't want to move. You... So now you know. Both. You know what that means? I'll have to kill you both, and I'll get away with it. Why, you miserable hunk of putty, you conniving shit. Uh, the Trumps want me to have their money, not you. I worked out that whole plan for them, all of it. And I'm the one they want to take care of it. Now drop that gun, Hope. You'd better drop it, Hope. It doesn't make any difference anyway. What do you mean it won't make any difference? Because our friend over there isn't going to pull the trigger. Oh, no? Then why not? Because Hope has released all those snakes. One thing she forgot. When snakes get cold, they try to get warm. And one of them just joined the party. He's right behind you, Irwin. I don't believe you. You're bluffing. Can't you hear him? You can't fool me. That's a steam radiator. In this house, they're all noisy. Irwin, if you make any kind of a move or fire that gun, he's going to strike. I'll make you a deal. Let me reach down and get that gun off the floor. I'll blast its head off. Careful. Don't move, Irwin. No, you don't. I know what you want that gun for. I wouldn't even turn around and look, Irwin. Not only going to move, I'm going to get that gun out of your reach. There was a snake. Look out, look out. He's on the loose. Oh, he dropped me. Super stretching. The worst of them all. Well, you've got the gun. Go on. Shoot him, Howard. Shoot him. All right, go. That's for him. But you're not staying behind me to get your... This is for you. Mr. and Mrs. Arbuthnot Trump were fresh out of beneficiaries, to say nothing of snakes. The only one that had found his way back into the warmth of the house was the one I'd mistaken for a steam radiator. And without a handy method for creating a new humanity, the Trumps found themselves without a purpose. So I gave them one. At my suggestion, and at the moment, Mr. T is hard at work in his home laboratory attempting to develop a machine with which mankind will fight the flying saucer. Mr. Trump's invention will be known as the Flying Cup and will be secretly dedicated to a waitress I once knew. Expense account, item three, $113.52 railroad fare, Highbridge, North Dakota to Hartford, Connecticut. Expense account total, $763.90. You may say this doesn't add up, but neither does anything else about this case. Signed, yours, uh, truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Paul Dudley and Gil Dowd with music by Leif Stevens. Edmund O'Brien can currently be seen starring in Harry M. Popkins' United Artists production, D.O.A. Featured in our cast were Peggy Weber, Harley Bear, Hugh Thomas, Dick Ryan, Jess Kirkpatrick, and Mary Ship. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. us again next week when Edmund O'Brien returns in another adventure of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. The Echo of Jesse James, a modern story of how police tracked down a couple of train robbers, will be brought to you on CBS's Gangbusters this Saturday night. The narrator will be the superintendent of Metropolitan Police, Washington, D.C., and another gangbuster's wonderful cast will reenact this true story for you. Join us this Saturday night on most of these same CBS stations for gangbuster's drama, The Echo of Jesse James. This is Roy Rowan speaking. This is CBS, where yours truly, Johnny Dollar, meets adventure every Friday night. The Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.